I was on the dock. We was we work on the dock. And if a wrench on the ship broke down, that'd give you maybe a half hour, maybe an hour, maybe two hours doing nothing. So I had a, a nice sharp pocket knife. So one day I decided that uh, I'd make a back stretcher. I made a hatchet. And everybody keep carb out some knives. Everybody keep, let me have this, let me have that. Okay, give me five dollars, give me ten dollars, whatever. And so one day I decided I'd make a walking stick. And man, it was out of sight. Everybody wanted it. And we should slip off and go down to the waterfront down there where the fellows were working. I used to watch carving cane, making fishnet and boats. I used to like to watch the fellas doing the carving most. Uh, it was amazing how they would do it. They didn't have much tooth thick, for instance, sandpaper. Then you to take a cocoa oil bottle and break it, smooth the uh, the wood with, and they would if they're gonna put a hole in it, they would heat a piece of iron and go. Oh, they didn't have any drill or anything like that. I guess that's what made me more interested. I was a teenager, about 14 years of age, and I saw this man. On the corner there, he was cutting on a piece of wood. And I walked up there because I was interested, and I looked at his cutting, and I started asking him questions. And he was nice about it. He started answering my questions. And he asked me, was I interested in carving? I told him, yes. Carving comes come natural to me from my father. And my father, father, fathers, they all was woodmans. So it's just in me to be what I am now, that I love carving and I love making canes. I've been an all-round fella to, just to make a living. But I always wanted to make a living at wood. It can't stop me because I hope one day to die with a, a knife and a piece of wood in my hand. That's the way I feel about cutting, because I love to cut. Maybe uh, during the 19, early 1960s, uh, my father used to make uh, wooden ships. And uh, that was sort of like a hobby, a pastime, when he was on the ship. And uh, that's uh, really my first contact with uh, wood woodworking. The thing, uh, I wanted to uh, decorate my canes, but I was trying to uh, stay away from uh, like uh, snakes and animals, even though I knew that was a tradition amongst uh, many of the black carvers. Because of uh, my, my religious beliefs, uh, that w which is Islam, and it didn't encourage uh, the use of many animals in uh, the artistic expression, so it forced many of the early Muslims to use geometric designs. So I tried to uh, use that same philosophy to force myself to find something that would be expressive and yet not uh, uh, expressing, you know, an animal or a snake or something. Well, I used a ball, a chain, uh, diamonds, uh, the the, uh, the uh, checkerboard square. Uh, it's the process, not necessarily the thing itself. And uh, by me uh, carving, as I said, and collecting, maybe I can influence more than just my family. It just came natural to me, really. Uh, every time I go out, you know, I used to w walk around out there in the woods and I'll see sticks and all that. It looked like something to me, you know. Uh, and I pick it up and I say, well, it could be this right here if I just take, and take the knife and take this part off of it. Uh, I'll make something on this right here. And then st sticks and faces of African people. Well, I say African people. It was uh, more my 
own kind of design with the African feel to it. Now you ask me why I came up with these ideas or where I came up with these ideas, I don't know. Usually when I have more, more two or more uh, features in my state, either bird animals or snakes or anything like that, it's really a story behind it. It's a thought that I had in the back of my mind that I just want to bring out. If you could look at my stick instead of the stick, and uh, you'll find that uh, I do have a little small story or something that I think is knowledge uh, that I can pass on. <laughs>